Let's haul some books. Alright guys, so I probably mentioned that I've been trying to be a little bit more selective on my book buying. How has that gone? Somewhat okay. I'm trying to make sure that the books that I buy are going to be like favorites. So I have bought some books recently, but I am hoping that they're going to be favorites. So it's mostly fantasy book haul. Let's get into it. I literally just have a pile and I'm just going to pull from the pile. These are books that I've bought recently in the last few months. I don't really remember the last time I did a book haul. But um, considering my book buying rate in the past, it's not the worst. And also some of these I was sent. So the first book I have to haul is one that I think I most recently bought. And this is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. And this is actually my current read. I picked up the audiobook and I felt seen. And I was like, I actually need to buy this book physically and annotate it. And I like have these tabs. I literally like matched them to the cover because I was feeling very passionate about this book. Um, so this is the story of chemist Elizabeth Zott and she is someone that's like faced a lot of adversity being a chemist in the 50s and 60s when women were not chemists. All she really wants to do is like to just like be a scientist and have people take her seriously and she's having a hard time with that. Fast forward 10 years later she is a single mother and she ends up on a television show where she uses her like no-nonsense chemistry approach to like teach people how to cook and it's called Supper at Six and she becomes really famous. But as her following grows not everyone is happy because she's kind of like subtly teaching women to go against the status quo. So I have started this so far and I literally have just like so many tabs. I feel like it really like speaks a lot to my experience as a woman in STEM and like it, it just makes me really grateful for how far the world has come in you know like the 70 years since the 50s and that I'm able to have like a full and fulfilling career in STEM whereas like someone like Elizabeth Zott had to like fight for every opportunity so it it really like makes me emotional I feel like this is like a really personally important read for me and I'm only like a third of the way in but like I I'm already like getting like favorite book vibes from this book also this cover is so fun Next is an arc that I was sent and I'm very excited about it and it is called The Jassad Hair by Sarah Hashim and it says get ready for an unmissable tale of shattered kingdoms, forbidden magic, and cunning royals in Sarah Hashim's Egyptian inspired epic fantasy debut. And it says at 10 years old the heir of Jassad fled a massacre that consumed her entire family. At 15 she buried her first body. At 20 her carefully crafted lies are starting to crumble. So Egyptian Inspired is really fun for me. I actually took like an Egyptian history class in college and it was so fascinating and cool. And so I'm excited to see a book inspired by that. Let's see. So Sylvia is the Jassad Hare and her family was killed. And now she's basically playing a deadly game with the Nizal heir and he like can't discover her identity and she's like has to um kind of liaise some rebel forces to make an, make a plan. So it just sounds really fun and cool and I, I love how floppy this is and I can't wait to read it. Okay, this is a very sad package because it's my last ever package from Book Depository. I literally wanted to open this on camera to commemorate RIP Book Depository. You will be missed. This was an order that I had placed before <laughs> before they got shut down and so it's the last Book Depository box I will ever open and how appropriate that it is a UK edition that I wanted to buy and I took advantage of their free international shipping. So, and it is beautiful. We have Rebecca Ross's Divine Rivals. Yes, the US cover. I really want that one too because I love Rebecca Ross. She, her books are here. She's an autobi author for me. Um, but I needed this UK cover because look at these characters. They're beautiful. And this is a story about two rival journalists. So she's been writing these like letters to her brother who is at the front line of this war in between gods and her letters end up falling into the hands of Roman who is her rival at the paper she works at and an unlikely magical bond forms and they basically like get sent into this war like with their typewriters and so I think it's so interesting like a fantasy book where like writers are going into like war-torn territory is so unique and cool and 
I Rebecca Ross has such beautiful writing like I really need to catch up on her backlist because I'm obsessed with her and all of her books and I just know I just know this is going to be a good one and I also love the US cover I'll put a picture of it here I also need to acquire that I just haven't gotten around to it yet but I will be doing that then this was a book that I was sent and it is Bewitched by ooh whoa oh oh I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting that because it's a spicy art card that fell out. Okay. All right. You know what we're getting into? Okay, so it's Bewitched by Laura Thalassa. So Laura Thalassa wrote Rhapsody, um, or no, Rhapsodic, which is like a fey fantasy romance series, which I read and loved. And now she is back with a witch story. And I know it's gonna be spicy. So Celine wants to join a coven. And in order to like qualify to join a coven, you have to go on a trip to like connect to wilderness like in a and you connect with your pair powers like through this quest so she books a plane to south america and this force tries to like drag her plane from the sky and her powers awaken so then she like discovers the source of this and it's this like ancient evil who then thinks that she is his long dead wife who betrayed him so then she manages to escape but then this evil guy shows up on the campus and of the coven that she has now been accepted to uh and starts wreaking havoc and so she has to kind of like enter into a bargain with him this sounds really cool i'm very excited i like i really i really really just need to get this room all set up so i just look at my physical books all the time and read them because i think this pile of books that i need to read next is this beautiful 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 edition of dance of thieves by mary e. pearson i have not read any of her books but i do want to um so this is like a reprint because the original hardcover right here came out a while ago and i definitely because of its popularity on book talk is why it got this exclusive edition so that's really cool to see look at these gold like gilded edges like they feel really smooth too so i love it and then we have end papers with a map love a good fantasy map and there is a bookmark you can kind of see it here so it's beautiful obsessed stunning i don't know anything about dance of thieves except i know it is a follow-up series to um the kiss of deception and so like i don't want to know anything more about that i think it has to do with like warring thieves dance of thieves uh -huh. yeah that's just on my my long back list of books that i own that i need to read but i couldn't pass up this beautiful special edition if you didn't know one of the I guess higher ups at Waterstones uh, like had them doing a lot of special editions has now gone to work for Barnes and Noble I think it's the CEO that would kind of make sense so Barnes and Noble has really 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 been upping their exclusive edition game if you haven't noticed because they have so many beautiful exclusive editions and I'm obsessed with it I reap the benefits as a consumer next is Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell when I saw this I absolutely had to buy it it was on my April TBR but I didn't get to it um it's so beautiful clara has this wild magic but it's never been dangerous until one day like a poison flower blooms in her father's chest and she needs the help of her childhood friend that has become mysterious and distant to help break this curse and she might just have the power to save the entire kingdom so this is like oh man look at the back it's like a cozy cottage core fantasy like i really need this in my life and like I just I am obsessed with this cover this is my favorite book cover of 2023 so far next is a book that was a birthday gift and this was a birthday gift from my lovely friend Melissa she bought me Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens which is not a book that I would normally pick up but she said she read it and really loved it and so she sent it to me and I do know it is a movie it's about a girl that like lives in the marshes and they suspect her of murder and so it's basically like this girl that's like been living in the wilderness but then some local men get curious about her and she meets them and it's a motion picture and it's a Reese's book club pick so hopefully it's good. I also want to mention that she got me this book sleeve. It's the House of Wind book club and I really liked it because I really wanted a book sleeve that was waterproof and zippered because I think that's really important for protecting your books when traveling and the ones that I had were waterproof but not a zipper so this is perfect and I just found it on Amazon and it's great. Next, I got Kingdom of Venom and Vows by Holly Renee, which is the third book in A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows. 
And so we follow Adara, who is a star marked human. And as a star mark, she can like awaken the power in the Fae. And so she has like is in a deal with the Fae to like go and be the betrothed of the prince. But when she gets there, she actually like falls in love with the prince's brother, who is like this dark magic using guy and kind of giving bad boy vibes and there is like a deeper plot going on um this is the third book in the series i really really enjoyed the series if you like fantasy romance that's fast paced maybe not as deep in the world building but will give you a lot of spice and a lot of like quick action this is the series for you and i need to definitely finish the series because i haven't read this book yet Next, I got The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. So this is like a morbid like fantasy rom-com I've heard and it's like about some undertakers but it's got like this cute little cover which I think is so fun. So it's about Heartache Heart and Merciless Mercy. Um, Mercy is an undertaker and Heart is a marshal that like patrols the wilds. Hart starts like writing letter anonymous letters to like a friend and starts actually like receiving replies and he doesn't know who exactly he is talking to. So like obviously it's like one of the tropes of like they infuriate each other but like they also secretly are pining for each other. But they don't know it's each other. So I think it's going to be really fun and the the tagline is so cute. It says true love might be the death of them. I just think this is like so quirky and cute and I'm gonna absolutely love it. Next from Keely for my birthday, I got the special edition of Cinder. Cinder is literally like a YA classic. It's a Cinderella retelling, but Cinder is a cyborg living in, what is it, like New Shanghai. And she is like a mechanic and anyone that has like cyborg parts, so she's like a cyborg leg, is like seen as less than a human. Um, but she begins a romance with the prince. Uh, after she has to like repair one of his things and it's just like such a classic YA series I love 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 the special edition um I just love the series and I'm so happy to have this in my collection finally then we have One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig I have been seeing this everywhere and it's described as like a dark gothic fantasy romance and I was like mm, sign me up so Elspeth needs like a monster to help keep her safe and she calls him the Nightmare and he's an ancient mercurial spirit trapped in her head. And so it says, a maiden must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom in this dark lush gothic fantasy debut. These are all the vibes that I'm going for. I love dark lush gothic fantasies and I've heard such good things about this one. So Alex actually got this for me for my birthday. So thank you, Alex. The other book that he got for me for my birthday is Heart of the Sun Warrior by Stu Lin Tan, which is the sequel to A Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And so in that book, we follow Xing Ying and she is the daughter of the moon goddess and in order to kind of like break her mother's curse she heads out into the celestial empire she befriends the emperor's son and she like learns a lot of skills becomes a celestial archer it was definitely like a winding book that like kind of take pl took place over a long period of time and so i'm interested to see like how this book is going to like delve deeper into the mythology and whatnot because it was just like a very beautiful fantasy book and I'm very excited to read the sequel. I was sent a PR package for Clementra by Costanza Cassati and when I got the email for it they said that they had to push back the release date because the truck carrying all of the copies of this book burned like and all of them like got burned up in the fire. That is an insane story but anyways I have these stickers and what was such a cool idea was the PR package came with tabs and then a bookmark to like match the tabs to certain things in the book. I think that's such a cool idea and I would definitely like be using that when I read this book. Um, so this is about Clementra and it says Monarch, Mother, Murderer, Magnificent. She's basically, I don't know what her, Clementra is married to a tyrant and she kind of like has to make a choice acceptance or vengeance and infamy follows both so i think it's about like a detested woman in greek mythology and like the tough choices that she's had to make which sounds really cool i love greek mythology retellings there's definitely a lot of them that have been coming out and i want to read them all right this is a chunky one but we have a day of fallen night by samantha shannon and this is the prequel novella to priori of the orange tree i think it might be bigger um this is a world that's separated by like east and west and there's like different kinds of dragons and the, there's a lot going on it's just like a 
beautiful fantasy world and even though it seems huge it is just like a standalone so it's like or I guess they're two different things but like you know what I mean like it's not like a series where you would have multiple 400 pages books but there's like 10 of them it's just like one long book and so it kind of like goes into the background of the kingdom and some of the legends I guess that are in Priory of the Orange Tree like we get to see them play out in real time um, I really love Priory of Orange Tree when I read it and I'm very excited about this one as well. And then the last book I have to haul today is The Fox Glove King by Hannah Witten. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition because look at this color scheme. Um, oh, and then we have these like end pages with this really cool map. I do think, oh, the cover has this. So I do think it is a book with a love triangle which is exciting because I feel like I haven't seen a love triangle in a while. Um, it says a gilded gothic and romantic new epic fantasy series about a young woman's secret power to raise the dead that plunges her into the dangerous world of the sainted king's royal court that i mean just sign me up sounds great i also do need to read her other books which i have but i haven't read yet which is the story of my life but yeah wow i want to read this and i hold a lot of books today but considering the amount of time i got them over i feel like it feels reasonable so but maybe that's just me that it feels reasonable to. Let me know if you've read any of these books down below and what you think of them. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.